From his first appearance in Tales of Suspense issue 57, Hawkeye has been an ever-present fixture within the Marvel Universe. Often featured as a member of the Avengers, Clint Barton has largely been the everyman standing on the shoulder of giants. An ordinary person with a bow and arrow, fighting alongside metahumans, gods and tech billionaires. As such, Hawkeye can often feel like one of the more overlooked and underappreciated members of the Marvel Comics universe, as he lacks the awe and spectacle that makes so many of his fellow heroes so iconic. But for me personally, I think it's this almost everyman-like quality that can make Hawkeye such a compelling character. And there are few better examples of this in practice than Matt Fraction and David Asher's 2012 Hawkeye comic book series. This book, which sees Clint fight alongside his protege, Kate Bishop takes the marksman away from the high stakes battle of the Avengers and Marvel's event comics and into the mundane everyday issues that readers don't often get to see, showcasing Hawkeye as a relatable man of the people and creating an incredibly endearing depiction of the character. So in this video, I want to break down the history of how this new take on Hawkeye came to be, how Matt Fraction and David Azure rebuilt the hero from the ground up and delivered on one of the most earnest earnest, heartwarming and relatable takes on one of Marvel Comics' most unsung heroes. Before we continue though, just a quick reminder to leave a like on this video if you enjoy it and subscribe to Owen Likes Comics so you don't miss out on any future videos. Despite being a character who has been part of the Marvel Universe since the mid-1960s, Hawkeye has never been a character to find great success in his own standalone series. Whilst he's been an ever-present member of the Avengers, even serving as leader of the West Coast incarnation and featured prominently in crossovers like House of M, Secret Invasion and Dark Reign, the character had only starred in a handful of short-lived solo books prior to Fraction and Azure's run. The first and perhaps most notable came in 1983, when writer-artist Mark Gruenwald penned a four-issue limited series that fleshed out much of Hawkeye's backstory, detailing his first encounter with Mockingbird, his future wife, as well as the villain Crossfire. Despite only lasting four issues, Gruenwald's take on Hawkeye would be seen as a definitive solo series for many years, with Fraction himself even crediting it as a major inspiration for his new take on the character. In particular, one of the most pivotal moments in Gruenwald's run came in the final final issue, when during a battle with Crossfire, Hawkeye's attempts to stop him using a sonic arrow backfire and the hero is left 80% deaf. Now, Hawkeye's loss of hearing would remain an integral part of the character for the next decade, until the events of the 1996 story Heroes Reborn, an event which saw the Avengers and the Fantastic Four be sent to a pocket dimension by Franklin Richards, with his hearing fully restored upon his return. Hawkeye would later be killed off completely during the events of Brian Michael Bendis' 2004 storyline Avengers Disassembled, before he would eventually return in the fallout of House of M, now taking on the new alias of Ronan. Clint's time as Ronan would also be a foundational piece of Fraction and Azure's 2012 Hawkeye series, as during this period, Marvel would introduce Kate Bishop, a young hero who adopts the Hawkeye moniker, with Kate's relationship with Clint Barton forming the basis of the Hawkeye status quo when Fraction and Azure began working on their series. With all of these changes to Hawkeye status quo throughout the 2000s, the company began to develop ideas for a new Hawkeye comic book series, one that would showcase the dynamic between Clint and Kate. The writer hired to work on this series was Matt Fraction, then best known for his work on Invincible Iron Man. Fraction described his initial pitch when receiving the title in an interview with Comicosity, where he stated, What drew me to Hawkeye was that he's just a guy, and an extraordinarily decent one at that. I thought to use the normal guy as the lens through which to view the Marvel Universe wasn't anything I'd done before and was something I'd really want to read. He's street smart, funny, he'll break rules, fall into the wrong beds, and absolutely positively won't stop until he's done the right thing. Teaming up with artist David Azure, who Fraction had previously collaborated with on Iron Fist, the pair embarks on a mission to reinvent the iconic marksman in a fresh way, adopting a unique method of writing that would stay true to the principles of classic Marvel stories 
storytelling, while simultaneously pushing the boundaries of what superhero comics can do. As Fraction explained in the book Words for Pictures, About a year before I started on Hawkeye, I started to experiment with writing in a method called Marvel Style, or Plot Style. It's called Marvel Style because Stan Lee came up with it when he was the only writer at Marvel and had to produce eight books a month. Stan started to write in a way that leaned very heavily on his artists, rather than requiring him to produce the screenplay-like scripts most of us think of as full scripts. I chose to write Hawkeye with David Aja like this for several reasons. First, my favorite pages from our time on Iron Fist, which was written full script style, always came when he'd politely and respectfully diverge from what was scripted for him, make something magical, then find his way back to where he was expected to be. So I'd start writing more and more vaguely for him to give him more and more freedom, and he always crushed it. Second, and I mean no disrespect to any of David's other collaborators, many of whom I'm a fan, but I never liked David's work more than I did on Iron Fist, and they are all doing full script for him, so you know, maybe a light bulb went off. For this collaboration, Fraction would provide Azure with overall story and plot ideas, and gave the artist the freedom to both flesh out and remix these ideas when putting them onto the page. Throughout their run, the three key aspects of Hawkeye's character that the duo sought to spotlight were his status as an everyman superhero, his relationship and mentorship to Kate Bishop, and his disability, with Fraction especially choosing to place a heavy emphasis on what it means to be a deaf superhero. By the time the the comic was announced, Hawkeye had begun to receive a significant spotlighting by Marvel, thanks to Jeremy Renner's portrayal of the character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And with the first issue of the highly anticipated series hitting shelves not long after the Avengers big screen debut, the world seemed truly ready to finally see Fraction and Azure's take on the classic Marvel hero. The first five issues of Hawkeye, collected under the name My Life as a Weapon, is an immediate change of pace for anyone previously familiar with the character. Gone is the trademark purple costume and world-ending stakes, and instead we find Clint Barton shooting an arrow from his trademark bow whilst falling out of a window. While it's a moment readers may feel like they have seen somewhere before, what came next would truly bring the hero's world back down to reality. As Hawkeye falls, he lands atop a parked car, and the next time we see him, he's in hospital, where we learn that he suffered multiple broken ribs, a cracked fibula, and a shattered pelvis. From its very first issue, Fraction and Azure strip the super element away from the character, and instead present Clint Barton as an ordinary mortal man simply trying to make the world a better place, whilst dealing with the very real consequences of his actions, as well as the mundane issues that come with civilian life. The first issue mostly focuses on Clint's conflict with Ivan, a local landlord who is dramatically hiking up rent prices in the apartment building that Clint lives in, as well as having his gang antagonise tenants in order to force them to leave the building. Not only does Clint fight off the gang, eventually forcing Ivan to let him buy the building from him, Hawkeye also adopts Ivan's dog, who had been caught in the crossfire of the fight and injured. From here, the comic introduces Kate Bishop, and we see the Hawkeye duo face off against villains such as the Ringmaster. Madame Mask and The Hand. This is largely the status quo established in the first volume, however this would begin to change as of issue 8, when we meet one of the book's most important antagonists in the form of The Clown, an assassin who is hired by many of the different villains Kate and Clint had faced previously, instructed with the task of killing Hawkeye. This war between Hawkeye and the Clown would go on for the next several issues, eventually climaxing in issue 15, when the hero is ambushed and stabbed in the ear with his own arrows. Now, this moment serves to be a massive turning point in the series, as we discover that Clint's eardrums were ruptured in the attack, and the hero is forced to come to terms with the realisation that he is going deaf. In addition, this realisation forces Clint to deal with the childhood trauma that he'd previously repressed, as we learn that his hearing was originally damaged as a result of his abusive father. With Kate having relocated to Los Angeles following a heated argument the pair had in previous issues, Hawkeye initially begins to isolate himself, believing that he can no longer be a hero without his hearing. 
This begins to change in issue 19 though, which focuses extensively on Clint's relationship with his brother Barney, the assassin known as Trickshot. While this issue is incredible for several different reasons, perhaps the most notable aspect of it is that all of the dialogue is communicated through American Sign Language, with the Barton brothers exploring their shared childhood trauma as Clint begins to find his self-confidence. In particular, this issue flashes back to the pair's childhood, where Barney tells Clint after after suffering his father's wrath to learn to make everything something to hit with in order to outlast the pain. Now it's this memory that makes Hawkeye realise that while his skills as a marksman may protect him, it's only through relying on those close to him that he will truly learn to outlast the problems he faces. From here, Clint begins to rebuild himself, having learned that his disability doesn't make him any less of a hero, and with the strength of those around him, he eventually picks up the bow and becomes Hawkeye once again. The series would then run for another three issues, before eventually concluding with issue 22, where Fraction and Azure wrap up their story by having Kate and Clint reunite and defend their apartment building against Ivan, the Clown, and the Tracksuit Mafia. Here, Clint gets revenge against the Clown, killing him with a toothpick, and the duo fight off Ivan's men and finally save the apartment building, providing a full circle sense of closure and reaffirming the book's overall premise. From its exhilarating exhilarating opening page to its tender but triumphant finale, this is a comic book that demonstrates that no matter who holds the moniker, Hawkeye is a hero that fights for the little person, a beacon of hope to those who often go overlooked in society. And despite whatever obstacles one might face, anyone can be a hero and a shining light to others. There's so many reasons why, to me, Fraction and Azure's Hawkeye series is one of the most refreshing and unique Marvel books I've read in a long time. While the overarching story of Clint's relationship with Kate, him coming to terms with his disability and defending the building against Ivan is terrific, it's honestly the focus on the smaller and more unexpected moments that makes this such a beloved comic book series. In particular, while it never fully forgets about the wider plot, Fraction and Azure manage to intercut it with a number of self-contained standalone issues that often use unusual and experimental storytelling techniques to great effect. While I've already touched on issue 19 and its tremendous use of American Sign Language, two other great examples of this are issue 11, a comic which is told entirely from the perspective of Clint's dog Lucky, and issue 3, which sees Clint and Kate engage in a high-speed chase to rescue a woman kidnapped by the tracksuit mafia. In my opinion, it's moments like this that demonstrate the sheer versatility of this series, balancing the serious nature of its plot with unique non-linear storytelling in a way that challenges the reader to engage with superhero comics told in an often unconventional style while still maintaining the core tenets of what Marvel fans have come to expect. And although the combined efforts of Matt Fraction and David Azure must be commended, I think a lot of credit also has to be given to the book's colorist, Matt Hollingsworth. Genuinely, the use of colour throughout this series is nothing short of stellar, with Hollingsworth bringing Azure's artwork to life in a way that makes it feel like a fascinating hybrid of 60s pop art and the 1980s comic book stylings of artists like David Mazzuchelli. Not only is Fraction's writing throughout this entire run tremendous, perfectly balancing the high stakes and the seriousness of Clint's situation with plenty of comedic and light-hearted moments, but when combined with breathtaking unique artwork and colouring, it makes this Hawkeye series truly one of the most charming and distinctive books I've read in recent memory. More so than anything else though, my biggest takeaway from reading this entire 22 issue run is just how it manages to feel like both a quintessential Marvel comic and something unlike anything the company had published before. With Fraction and Azure's use of the Marvel style approach to storytelling at its core, the entire comic feels like a love letter to the classic Stan Lee Jack Kirby era of Marvel comics, presenting an everyman like hero and his struggles to overcome genuine relatable problems, while simultaneously having the cutting edge feel of some of the best indie books published over the past two decades. Honestly, it's almost quite fitting that, given that Hawkeye himself is not only an unlikely hero within the Marvel Universe, but also a character who rarely gets his own long-running title, this comic managed to defy all expectations, becoming not only
only the hero's longest running solo book, but also pushing the envelope for the type of stories Marvel can tell with their flagship heroes. What Matt Fraction and David Azure accomplished, alongside Matt Hollingsworth and several guest artists like Steve Lieber, Annie Wu, and Francesco Francavia, is truly astounding to me, as they, against all odds, managed to craft what is not only the most definitive Hawkeye series of all time, but one of the absolute best comic books of a generation, becoming what is undoubtedly nothing short of an unexpected and unlikely masterpiece. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notify bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you enjoyed this and you want some more, there should be some others on screen right now that you might also enjoy. If you want to help support the channel and help me make more videos, you can do so over at patreon.com slash owenlikescomics. And if you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter just at owenlikescomics. But that's all for this video though. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you next time. But until then, take care and keep reading.